morning and welcome as we gather on this Sunday after Christmas, after the celebration of our Lord's birth, to continue to wait for the Lord to come to our lives and fill us with his grace and his hope. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. As we gather in our Lord's presence, we pray, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see, shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 148. Hallelujah, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of him. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them the law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deep. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth, you open our eyes to see the wonders around us and our hearts and mouths to praise you. Now give us strength for loving service through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The second reading is a reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, 
in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son onto our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple, and when the parents brought up the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was a prophet, Anna, the prophet of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then, as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather in your presence, we pray that your Holy Spirit would open our hearts, that we would see your glory and your wonder. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Christmas, even in a pandemic, can be a little bit trying for children, as they're full of anticipation, and yet they have to wait, and they have to wait, and they have to wait before they get to experience what it is they are anticipating. That's a good thing for us to learn as children and to not forget as adults. We need to remember that when our frustration rises over slow Wi-Fi signals that seem to be taking seconds longer than they should. At the moment, the entire world is filled with anticipation, waiting for vaccines to set us free from the oppression of the pandemic. As joyous as receiving presents are, or not being threatened with the illness of a pandemic, both of those events are actually short-lived. The thrill of gift opening does not last long, and even if one receives something they were hoping for, its glimmer and its shine and specialness fades. And even if the vaccine enables us to end the pandemic, the threat of illness will still be a reality for our lives. Nonetheless, we look forward and long for such change in our lives. One of the unique things about the pandemic is that the change we are longing for is not just going to affect 
our lives as individuals, it's going to affect the lives of everyone on the planet because pretty much everyone on the planet has been affected by the pandemic. What we seek after is something that will impact humanity as a whole in a positive way. The pandemic invites us to see the world as one and our needs as humans connected to one another. It's the kind of perspective and hope that Simeon had. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. Simeon was looking not simply for his own interests, but for the interests of all. He was looking for the comfort of all people, not just himself. He knew that what the world needed was a righteous and just leader. The promise of the Messiah was a promise for a righteous and just leader. A person of greatness like had never actually been seen before or experienced before. It is the tendency among humans to look for the offspring of great people to do such great things. Mary and Joseph have brought Jesus to the temple to present him to the Lord and to make an offering. The offering is in thanksgiving and a prayer for the child who is designated as holy to the Lord. It is an acknowledgement of the sacredness and the holiness of life and that life and sacredness come from God. Their offering is a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Their offering indicates they are not really well-to-do. They are making the minimum offering, the one that the poorest of society make, an unknown poor couple who faithfully come to make their offering and worship God, but not the lineage one would expect the leader to transform the world to come from. But Simeon's vision is not based on world perceptions. Simeon is being led by the Holy Spirit, who has promised him that he would get to see the Messiah, the Lord. There is an openness in Simeon. He has not come to a personal conclusion as to how and where God will move and work in this world. What about us? Are we open to the move of God in ways that may both surprise and challenge us? There is no indication that Simeon gets to see and experience all that Jesus does and all that Jesus is. Yet he says that he is now able to be at peace. He knows that God is acting in a way in human history that is going to transform the world. He's not simply holding the one who is going to be a righteous and just leader. He is holding the one who will save us from the destruction that rages in our lives. He is holding the one who is the light and the glory. Simeon knows, though, that such a rescue, such a salvation, such righteousness and justice does not come painlessly. This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul Simeon is proclaiming that he knows what is needed is not a simple makeover or a little cleaning up. The transformation that is needed is deep and radical, so much so that the accusation is made that the early followers of Jesus get accused of turning the world upside down. Simeon is proclaiming that in Jesus a light has come into the world that illumines everything including our inner thoughts. In the presence of Christ, we are exposed. Are we surrendering to the grace and the mercy and the love of God, or are we grasping for our rights, our privileges, our wants and desires at the expense of others? Are we loving neighbor as ourself, or are we loving self above all else? 
In the presence of Christ, our inner thoughts are exposed. We are exposed. It is not a painless experience. A sword will pierce your own soul, too. You don't get a deeper cut than having your soul pierced. But the world is not in good health. We need a healing of our very souls if we are to love others as God has loved us. When the prophet Anna encountered Jesus, she began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Are we looking for redemption? Are we looking for the transformation that will allow us to proclaim, thank you, gracious God, that your will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. May we, like Simeon and Anna, embrace Jesus our Lord, that we would be exposed and transformed by the light of Christ, a light filled with grace and mercy and love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we pause to reflect upon your glory, the wonder of you entering human history, may your Holy Spirit touch our lives that we would embrace your light, your grace, your love, and your mercy. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us now bring our prayers before our Lord. In joy and humility, let us pray to the Creator of the universe. By the good news of our salvation, brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord, and open our hearts, our minds, our souls, to welcome you, to hear you, and to be open to you. By the mystery of the Word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. May your people embrace you, the light that has broken into the world, that we could reflect that light to others, to share your grace and your love, your mercy and your kindness, and be filled with the joy of the love of God pouring through God's creation. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, Lord. May we be filled with wonder and awe at the grace and the mercy of you taking on flesh and being one of us, to hold us, to touch us, to embrace us, to love us and care for us. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, Hear us, Lord. May your glory be manifested 
through our lives, through people's lives throughout the world, that grace and joy and peace and love would stir in the hearts of those you have created. By the submission of the maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. May we be willing to submit our hearts and our lives to you, that we would trust you, welcome you, and walk with you. By the baptism of the Son of God in the River Jordan, hear us, O Lord, that you would humble yourself and submit yourself to others. May we, Lord, be strengthened by your grace, your humility, and mercy, and give thanks for all you have done for us that is proclaimed in the waters of our baptism. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. That your kingdom would come, that your joy, your peace, your love, and your grace would reign. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray, be with us this day and forevermore. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us into God's presence. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And now as Simeon was sent forth in peace, having been touched and seen the glory of the Lord, may we go forth in the peace and the grace of Christ. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.